Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to be polishing this large pudding stone. I'll give you a close up of it here. This is not my rock, I'm doing this one for somebody else. This is by far the best face right here. So what I've got here is a couple saw horse and a piece of plywood and then I screwed a few 2 by 4s on the top here um, so I can set this in here so it's not moving around as I'm working on it. I'll start with just a regular angle grinder. This has a cup wheel on it, a diamond cup wheel. I got this at Harbor Freight. And this will be dry, so there will be a lot of dust. Um, I wear all the protective gear. I've got a respirator, uh, rubber gloves, uh, eye protection, ear protection. And so I'll grind on this. I'll do the, the heavy work with this. And then I'll move on to this grinder, which is a wet grinder. So I hook this up to a garden hose water squirts out the middle and keeps the work wet and this has velcro pads on it so i'll start with 30 grit and i'll work my way up through seven or eight different polishing pads up to 3000 grit and i'll put a list of the different polishing steps i use i'm sure there's other ways to do it but i'll leave a list of those in the description so let's get started All right, so the first step is done. Uh, now we're gonna go on to the wet grinder with the soft back wheels. And the whole idea from here is just to take the big scratches out. So this is 30 grit. It'll leave a little smaller scratches than this. It's also a sap, soft back thing. This has some flex to it. So I'll go over the whole thing with 30 and then I'll just progress through different grits, finer and finer and finer until it's a shiny rock. Right now it's not too shiny. I just finished with the 30 grit pad and I've dried the rock off and now it's important to take a look at the rock closely with it being dry and look for any spots that need more work. You can see some grind marks right there, those have to come out. And there's some a spot right there. There's some really pretty deep grinding marks right there. If you wait too long to take those out and you don't go on to two or three stages beyond and then you notice those, it's really hard to get them out. So you basically have to go back several stages and do all the stuff that you just did over again. So it's really important to dry the rock off, look it over really carefully. I'm going to take a sharpie and circle all these spots and then I'll go back and grind them all again. I'll dry it off and make sure it looks good before I go on to the next stage. So each stage along the way I do that. So we'll grab my sharpie and uh, get on to the next step. I just got done doing the 50 grit disc and I've marked out the spots that need a little more work with that one and then I'm going to move on to the 100 grit. So here's how it's looking. It's a really nice rock. It looks better now that I've ground a little bit. You can see more of the jasper and stuff in it than you could before. So on to 100 grit. Alright, so that's it for 100 grit. On to 200 next. Here's how it's looking.
had a couple bad spots I'll mark. So I just circle them. And I'll do that with 100 before I switch disc to 200. All right, this is coming along nicely. Uh, 200's done, and I'm on to 400 next. I hope I don't run out of daylight here. It's, uh, it's evening now. I started before noon and then uh, went in for lunch, and I came out and it rained for most of the day after that. So um, hopefully I have enough daylight to finish this up tonight. Anyhow, I wanted to point out that one of the toughest parts about doing this is keeping track of where you're at on the rock. So what I start with is one side. I do that, I rotate it, I do this side, I rotate it, I do this side, and I just keep doing that. When I get all the way around to where I started, then I go back and I do the ends. And I always overlap a little bit. So as I'm doing this side, I go, kind of go over to the end. And then when I do this end, I come back over to this side again. So hopefully this part gets done twice and I don't miss any spots. Uh, but that's why it's important to dry it off in between and look at it. If I do miss any spots, they usually show up pretty well once it's dry. They don't show up at all when it's wet. So, uh, what did I say I'm on? 200? Uh, 400 is next. 400 is done and 800 is up next. Looking good. It's done with 800 and moving on to 15. I keep moving farther and farther out into the yard to uh, get a little bit of sunlight, but uh, there's not much light left. Anyhow, here we are. This is done with 1500. I have one more pad to go. Um, it's starting to get a pretty good shine to it. I can see the reflection of the trees in it a little bit. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but I'm um, getting a little bit shiny now, so uh, one more step and hopefully it gets a little bit shinier yet. All right, I'm inside now, and the rock's gone through 3,000 grit, and it's looking really nice. I'm really happy with this. It's got a pretty good shine on it right now. I'm going to attempt to get a little more shine on it with some aluminum oxide polish. Um, I bought this, I don't know what you call this thing, polishing wheel. Uh, I got it at Harbor Freight and I just got it wet and smeared some aluminum oxide powder over it and then I'm going to just keep it wet with a squirt bottle. So, see how this goes. Well, there's the finished product. I spent about 10 minutes with the aluminum oxide and I really don't know if it made any difference at all. It didn't hurt anything, but it was pretty shiny before. It's still pretty shiny. I'm really happy with the way it looks. Uh, so I'll put in the description a list of all the different steps I used and about how much time I spent on each one of them. And thanks for watching.